Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice presented by Fleet Farm. This episode is going to be all about technology. So this is sweet. If you look at the Mega Live, we actually have an Apex unit which has an HDMI out and we're able to display that on the 50 inch big screen. That's what I mean. You want a really good drag for this. So fun watching them on the camera. So if you don't have a camera or some way to actually see them bite, you won't even know that they're biting. 40 years ago, I convinced my wife that she should sew me up some fish houses. So this was the result of that dream I had, I guess. I want to talk about one of my favorite new products on the ice this year, and that's the Strike Master 24V. But the biggest thing is, is finding the fish and scanning with Mega Live. That's a bunch of bluegills and crappies. The situations where I pull out the camera is when I find fish in the weeds. In Manitoba, you have to bend the barbs. It's barbless up here. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's a Manitoba beauty right there, huh? And a lot of these lakes up here aren't charted. So one thing we've been doing is we've been utilizing the auto chart live feature on our helixes. A lot of times when the fish are really uh, aggressive, you can use soft plastics where it can work really, really well. First, we're going to join Jeremy Smith and Dan Quinn as they show off a unique way to use Mega Live in a Yeti fish house. Dan, we have, oh, I just missed one, a beautiful day. And we're out kind of drilling some holes around, seeing what's happening in a basin here to hopefully land on some nice bluegills and big crappies when the sun hits the trees. We're going to spend the night in the fish house tonight, and I've got a kind of a cool little setup in there with the Mega Live unit to be able to watch the big screen TV and hopefully we get the fish moving through there. Oh, Dan, loaded. Loaded underneath the fish house right now. When we first set up, we set the fish house up on the school. But of course, that noise kind of pushed them off to the side, but I think things settled down a little bit, and we're going to be on a nice school of panfish. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's funny, you make noise, and even though it's 20 feet deep, us just getting the fish house set up, drilling all those holes, getting the generator set up, we had a lot of work to do with you know, just getting set up to shoot, and just that noise, when we, we set the fish house up on the school, and now they're all like 30 feet away from the fish house, so with any luck, they'll be back here. In the oh, I just missed them. So this is sweet. If you look at the Mega Live, we actually have an Apex unit, which has an HDMI out. Ooh. And we're able to display that on the 50 inch big screen. So because that, the Mega Live transducer and down view is so wide, we can see 10 feet. We can watch both of our lures on the same depth finder and look at the school of fish that's on there. So it's pretty cool. Oh, oh <laughs> you gotta set the hook a little harder next time. I, think, yeah, I didn't get quite enough mustard behind that one. I'm, I don't know where to look. I'm looking at this. I'm so used to this, but I kind of want to look at that. Wow, this is wild. Oh, there he comes. Look at that. Oh. That is sweet. All right, this is what's so cool. So here, Dan has his 2D just to get a, a better sense of really, oh, I just, that was a nice fish. What's going on? So this is me, this is Dan, and then looks like there's a fish covering up our dead stick right now. But it, I mean, you, just being able to see individual fish, I can't ex explain how much you learn from the attitude of it. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're looking at the 2D, it's just a steady line. And then you see a fish all of a sudden from 10 feet away that decides he's got a better attitude and it's just really fun. It's hard to talk and explain what's going on because it is so mesmerizing and to see it on this scale is unbelievable. Well, for my whole life I've always used 2D and then now I've kind of got that open water like, you know, as the, the screen's moving by, you have the history, but now to see this and see what it looks like on 2D is really mind blowing. I mean, you have a whole new appreciation for what, when fish are moving, what's actually going on. This is really amazing. <laughs> this is so cool. That's a, that's a big old, big, oh, big horses, Bubba. Big horses, Bubba. Oh. oh, Dan. Oh, you got him, don't you? You got him, you got him, no? 
Big horses, did he? He totally swung and missed, huh? Unless if here comes, he's coming for you again. He's gonna get you, got, got him. Yes. Got him, there that we go. That was so cool, dude. Yeah. That was so cool. That's oh, a nicer nice fish, crappy, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, nice crappy. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was awesome. That really is something. That's a whole experience to see this happen. It's like you're in the middle of a movie or something. Oh, man. oh here comes another big crappie. He's coming from the left. See that? Got him. There's another crappie. He just came in. And... Nice. That's cool. Look at that. The sun's hitting the Oh, it's the a trees. nice, yeah, nice sunny. But both of those fish, it was cool is they came from a distance. They knew it was there. The fish that are like right below us, they're just kind of neutral and almost, oh, that stick's going off. Look at this, look at this right here. It's like, oh man, that stick's going. That was crazy. A little crappie. This is just chaos right now. It is totally turning into chaos. Dan, you called it. Sun's gonna hit the trees. Crappies are gonna come through. Whew. With the live, we're really getting a sense of how the, the fish are moving and you know, it, was, it was such a nice day that it was hard not to just be outside and en enjoying the, the weather outside fishing. But, you know, if you just sat, if it was one of those cold, nasty days, as, as we're seeing here, you could sit in here all day long and every, you know, every so often these schools just move through. So when you're basin fishing and you land on a, a pot of fish and they somewhat disappear, I mean, what we're seeing now is it's really just a matter of waiting around and the fish are gonna be coming coming back through. So if you've got a nice day like we had, we just chased the fish around all day in this area. And now it got, you know, it's starting to get cold and dark. So we set up in here and we're having now just as good of action as we were when we were chasing fish out in the basin. It's like they might disappear for five minutes, but they come right back. It's pretty cool. Look at that one's chasing it down. That's super cool. Then he grabbed it on the fall. That was neat. Ooh, and it's the nicest one I've caught tonight. How about that? Huh? That's pretty neat. Not a bad one. Get this one back. And so the, the two sticks that I'm using for this are one is the St. Croix Tundra. Both of them are in that 26 to 28 inch range. I really like that length for pan fishing. We're in the house right now, so I, I really do like having something a little bit shorter. This is the 26 inch light extra fast, it's got that high-vis tip, it's great for doing this thing. And the other one I was fishing with outside, I've just got my little tungsten jig on here, this little Mongo jig, a classic bluegill crappie presentation. This is the 28 inch and the ultralight. It's a nice panfish rod all around. And so I've just got both of these set up. When the fish are biting, definitely like using the spoons or some type of a, even a, a rattle bait. But uh, I definitely always have a jig and then some type of a bigger artificial on deck. And then the Yeti here, I can have my bait, my rods right there, and totally set to catch some nice crappies. Back down we go. It's absolutely amazing. Looking at my 2D, which I've fished with my entire life, I see three marks on there. And then I look up at this, the screen's filled with them. They're, they're hanging outside the cone and you don't realize it and you'd have no way to know all these fish are here. This technology is amazing. Not only as we sit here on top of the ice, but I get to interact with a lot of these bass pros fishing the highest turn level tournaments in the country. And, and this is becoming the dominant thing in bass fishing too. You can see it any sort of fishing, you, you just have a whole new appreciation for what the fish are doing and how they're acting and how many are actually down there. I mean, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. It is. Absolutely unbelievable. And right now we're, we're looking at it in the down viewing mode, but of course we can look in a, in a mode two, which we were doing earlier in a forward mode where we can actually scan the area and see exactly where the, where the pods of fish are. When you're fishing in one spot, it's a lot more fun to have it in this down mode so we can see. Oh, bite. The infamous cat and mouse of ice fishing to a different level, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, it is so fun seeing the number of fish and how, whoa, there's a decent one, Dan. Oh yeah, how, beauty, look how, at that. How we're, if you were sharing a transducer, which we could do with a regular sonar unit, we'd be like, oh, he's looking at mine, but oh no, he's looking at mine, but it's actually like 20 different fish down there and we can see how they have different, different attitudes. And I'm telling you what, live, 
Technology, you said it Dan, will simply make you a better fisherman. With it, you're just gonna catch more and bigger fish. And what a fun thing to do is to come out in a fish house and catch a pile of fish. You can set up your Helix to watch this. You can do something cool like we did with the Apex where we get to watch it on a big screen TV. But in terms of a really fun ice fishing experience, fishing in comfort in a fish house like this, <laughs> watching all the fish on the screen, it really doesn't get any better than this. And that's for real. It, it, it doesn't. Yeah, this is Disney World for adults, right? <laughs> for grown men. That's right. This is how we go and have fun. <laughs> it is. Oh, and I think we're going to get another. Oh, Ooh, he, just, that... he bypassed me looking for yours, Dan. Oh. <laughs> Let's travel through time with Dave Gens as he shows us the evolution of the fish house. Well, over 40 years ago, I convinced my wife that she should sew me up some fish houses. And this was the, the result of that. You can see that it flipped up and down. I wanted a couple reasons. I wanted shelter from the wind and the cold, and I wanted to hide from the other fishermen so they didn't see I was catching any fish. Uh, I just knew that this was gonna catch on and the world was gonna be fishing in a, in a quick flip over shelter. You know, and it's progressed on to much bigger shelters you can stand up in. You know, we could walk right in the front of the fish house. It still flips up and down like that one does. You know, collapses down quickly with the, the new pole systems that we have. You know, we got quilted material that, you know, so it's nice and toasty warm in there. You know, nice chairs, rod storage. You know, it's a, it's a bass boat on ice. You know, we moved on to the transportation out there. You know, so we decided to mount it right on the back of the sled. So wherever you got your stuff in there, it's still there. So this whole system makes ice fishing easy and it helps you get more fish on the ice. Next we'll join James Linder and Phil Lauby as they utilize Mega Live and Oakview cameras to locate and identify panfish and shallow weeds. You know right now Phil and I, Panfish Phil, are looking for shallow water panfish. We're talking bluegills and crappies. You know, so many people think about deep water basins, but in a lot of lakes, a lot of fish are shallow and that's what we're hunting right now. But the biggest thing is, is finding the fish. And actually we spent a lot of time out roving around cutting holes and scanning with Mega Live. Actually, Phil is really aggressive at this and he actually spends some amount of time. Actually, we probably spent an hour and a half just trying to initially find fish where we're gonna set up. But we're in actually a re relatively what shallow water basin area in here that's a big expanse of shallow flats. Yep, weed edge at about eight, eight and a half, and then it deeps, it gets about 12, 14 feet. You can see that there's a big school of fish actually about 10 feet to 20, 30 feet out directly in that direction. That's a bunch of bluegills and crappies. You know, with any type of new electronics technology, you're, there is a learning curve. I've been using uh, Hummingbirds Mega Live in the open water in the winter season, probably for about a year now. Uh, one thing that's vitally important is the fact that in general to see fish, the transducer has to almost be in a fixed position. That gives you the best resolution. When I'm looking at the screen here, you can see that these are, I'm just sitting in a fixed position and you can see these bluegills just moving around. You can see that the cameras or the transducer is not moving, it's in a fixed position. But when you watch these little clumps of fish, you can see them moving. But as I twist this, you'll watch when I twist here, now you can see those are clumps of weeds. But if I focus on those weeds, you can see that there's also suspended fish sitting around those weeds. When you get into the weeds, you gotta leave it focused on a clump of weeds and just look for little balls moving around in them. You can't scan quite as quick as when you're in the basin. You can see them right yeah. there. There's a whole bunch of them right out yeah. this way. At within 25 feet out that way, there's a big school of fish right, right now. So when do we want to use the camera? You know, we've started off, we did a lot of work with the, the Mega Live, but when you, the situations where I pull out the camera, especially this little portable one that Aquaview has, um, is when I find fish in the weeds. I mean, that, that to me is probably the number one time I use the camera. And I, what do I use it for? Twofold. One is to see what type of species they are. Cause a lot of times it's, you'll have a mix of bluegills and crappies, but maybe you're just targeting crappies. So we look, we look for the species and we also look for the size. Cause believe it or not, you know, like a lot of times you might find on what you'd consider a really big school of fish, but they're all small. So, you know, I like to see what kind of fish we're looking at too. Um, and I do like to jump around with this camera. Um, so there's like little spots that you can find within these weeds 
um, that are better than uh, others. So the camera kind of reveals that to you pretty quickly other than just fishing through and spending a lot of time hole hopping and fishing. You can, you can cover a lot more ground with the camera up in the weeds. So. One other thing when I'm jumping holes, I don't spend a lot of time in a hole because crappies and bluegills are pretty curious little fish. So um, typically when you drop it down, you give them 30 seconds, maybe a minute at the most in a hole, and then you're jumping because they'll, they're within a small radius of this hole. They'll come and check out your camera head. So don't spend a lot of time. Spin your camera head two, three times, and then jump to another hole. Got one coming in. Give him a chase. Got him. There we go. Okay, little bluegill. Ooh, there you go. There's a nice gill. Look at that guy there. He's a little bit better. Wait, he's really launched it. Holy mackerel. Beautiful fish. Not a giant. You know, one thing that's uh, pretty big about ice fishing is the live bait. You know, throughout the summer months, we fish for so many different species of fish without live bait. That's inclusive of walleyes and all different, you know, even panfish, crappies uh, throughout the summer months and spring. But one thing I would tell you that uh, in winter, we very rarely go out on the ice without some type of live bait. And, you know, right now, Phil and I are fishing for crappies and uh, bluegill. So we have uh, wax worms, small minnows, as well as uh, a Euro oh, larva. Got one. Feels like a decent one. Oh yeah. There's a nice one. Starting to show up a little bit more. And we do a lot of experimentation based on the uh, activity level of the fish. A lot of times when the fish are really uh, aggressive, you can use soft plastics which can work really, really well. But there's a lot of the time, I can guarantee you, meat is neat. <laughs> when I'm running a spoon, I just throw three, four euros on there, pack them on. Thread one of the waxies on there like that, all the way up the body. And then I put a, another tipper on there. A lot of times if they're inactive, they'll be stripping the waxy off the back of the jig. There's a little bit better one. Ooh. There we go. Nice one, Jimmy. There, buddy. The mood of the fish, these guys here are sort of interesting. They're in sort of a crabby mood, boy, it's pretty, Critical the way to get them and trigger them into biting. There's one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, it is kind of ironic. Most of the fish that we've been getting have been really, really moody. Every once in a while, we'll get one to come in and just slam it. So. You know, it really wasn't a great day on the ice, but it wasn't a bad day on the ice. We ended up catching quite a few nice nice crappies in the shallow water basin. But the real key is uh, the willingness first to go out and find the fish. You know, we went out and spent, you know, an hour and a half or so to find the fish. And then even after once we found them, the interesting thing was that the uh, activity level of the fish was sort of somewhat slow. So we had to really coax a lot of these fish into biting and really prime time was right at low light and that's when we got the most bites but that's what ice fishing is about being out at the right time to get bites and we would actually if we were keeping them we would probably had a pretty good meal tonight no question about it Now, if you're an angler that likes to hole hop around and stay mobile, the StrikeMaster Lithium 24 volt is the auger for you. It's lightweight, it's tough, and it's super durable, and it's not gonna tire you out if you're drilling a bunch of holes throughout the day. Now, new to StrikeMaster this year is the Magnetic Snap Cover Light Flight. Now, it protects your blades when your auger's not in use, and it's easy to get on and off. And also, the flat base is great for vertical storage in a garage or shed. Another great early ice product is the Sled Pull Harness by Clam. Now it's a two-point pulling harness, it's got padded straps, it's easy to use, and you can use it for a variety of different activities including ice fishing, hunting, and family recreation. A product I'm excited for this year is the Compact Mega Scoop by Rapala. Now it's got a large scoop for removing the maximum amount of slush, it also folds up and it'll attach to my ice fishing unit, which is great for hole hopping or ice trolling. 
This one's for you wheelhouse guys and it's Suffix Rattle Reel Line. Now it comes in four different colors including some high vis options which are great for night fishing. It comes in 20 pound or 30 pound tests. It's got low stretch and great durability. Depending on your state or province, multiple lines are generally allowed and tip ups are a great way to cover water. Here I've got the 60th anniversary Beaver Dam tip up. Now this tip up's freeze proof, wind proof and full proof. It comes with a special lubricant that helps prevent freezing even in the toughest conditions, and it's a great option for setting out a second line. Last year, St. Croix came out with the Tundra series, and this one's my favorite out of the series. It's a 30 inch, light power, extra fast action. It's the ultimate panfish rod. It's got recoil guides, a highlighted orange tip for detecting those light bites, and it loads up into some great backbone. If you're looking for a great multi-species bait, the Ribbon Leech Flutter Spoon by Clam is a great option. It comes in three different sizes and it has a really unique fluttering action that calls in fish from a distance, and it has that bonus flapper tail that really seals the deal. For you walleye anglers, I got two great options from Northland. The first is the Buckshot Glass Rattle Spoon. Now this spoon has a built-in Buckshot Glass internal rattle that really calls in the fish. It also has a translucent, realistic like bait fish shine that really mimics bait fish in the water and it just triggers those walleyes into biting. Now the second is the Glow Shot Fire Belly Spoon from Northland. Now this has a similar profile to the Buckshot Spoon or the Glass Buckshot Spoon, but what's unique about this is it has an internal pocket where you can put a glow stick in. And there's three different color options, chartreuse, green, and red, and this is great for those nighttime anglers. You know, guys who are fishing overnight in dark, dirty waters, this glow shot rattle spoon really shines and calls in the walleyes. The Rapala Jigging Wrap has been around forever and everyone knows it catches fish, but color is confidence and recently Rapala came out with some new colors that are fish catching machines. They're available in sizes two, three, and five now, which are suited for ice fishing. Now new to Aquaview this year is the AV722. Now it has a 7 inch LCD screen with an ultra portable power pack design. It has a built in lithium battery. It's got 50 feet of rugged cable. It also comes standard with mag spool technology and it has video out capabilities. So you can hook it up to a fish house, a big TV in here, or you can hook it up to an external video recorder. If you're looking for a premium ice fishing rod this winter, you got to get your hands on a tuned up custom rods precision noodle. Now this one happens to be a 32 inch rod with an ultra light action noodle power. Now it comes in lengths from 28 inches up to 36 inches. It's got the ultra sensitive tip for detecting the lightest bites. And if you're gonna be using small jigs for big bluegills, you gotta get your hands on a tune up custom rods precision noodle. Now a good jacket and bibs are something every ice angler should have. And I've got a great option from Clam and it's their Rise float suit with motion technology. Now this jacket's super comfortable. It's non-restrictive. You can move around in it. It's windproof, waterproof, and incredibly durable. And as a little extra piece of insurance and peace of mind, it does float in case something ever were to happen. Here I've got an ice fishing unit that can do it all, and it's the Hummingbird Helix 7 Chirp GPS Gen 4. Now it has a seven inch LCD screen. It has chirp interference rejection. It has GPS and has auto chart live, so you can create your own maps. This unit can really do it all. Over the past few years, ice fishing units have been getting bigger and forward facing sonar has really come onto the scene and that takes a lot of juice. Here I've got the Dakota Lithium 12 volt, 18 amp hour battery. Now this lithium battery is small and compact, but packs a punch. It's got a lot of juice and you're gonna be able to power those big units and fish all day on a single charge. Now that wraps up cool products. Make sure to head to your local fleet farm or online at fleetfarm.com where you can find most of this awesome gear. Now let's head north to an incredible ice fishing destination, Northern Manitoba. What are some extreme ice fishing destinations? Great Lakes Trout, South Dakota Perch, Lake Winnipeg Walleyes. Today we are going north on a spring ice fishing mission to Rocky Lake Resort in Manitoba's northern region. Manitoba's winters are a gateway to unreal ice fishing opportunities, offering access to numerous lakes and a variety of trophy species. Northern Pike, Lake Trout, Walleye are all popular choices for anglers. The remote backcountry and easily accessible fisheries that Manitoba offers are in abundance. That time he ate it.
Well, that's a beautiful fish. I tell you what, Manitoba is just well known for big fish, and no matter if it's walleyes, pike, lake trout. There's over a hundred thousand lakes in Manitoba. There we go. Boy, you think they want it? Look at that, just choked it. The first of our three-day trip, we focused on walleyes, pike, and believe it or not, smallmouth bass on Rocky Lake, where the lodging is at. Nope. Walleye, nice little, nice little fatty, little fatty. Look at that guy there. We've been bouncing around. We cut a lot of holes out in the flats. And it's the one thing when you get into shallow water like this, a lot of times, it, you know, we're on, in this rocky lake, it's, we're on pretty extensive flats and there's not a lot of cover, like big, big rocks on the bottom. It's sort of the big stance of uh, sand flats. And what we've done is you cut a lot of holes and the fish are like really grazing around on all this big schools of perch that are spread out. So what we've done is cut, you know, we've cut like 30, 40 holes, you know, in a couple of acres of areas. And we're just intermittently bouncing from hole to hole to hole. It's sort of interesting because you'll get, it seems like they're just pushing the, uh, the perch around. A lot of these lakes up here aren't charted. So one thing we've been doing is we've been utilizing the auto chart live feature on our helixes. So I've got a hole here I haven't been on. I just go to mark, and then I just hit over it. I've got two options. It's got auto chart live and then waypoint. And I just hit over, hit the auto chart live, and then I can go to map, and there we go. So I've just been building this map as we go. And uh, it's given us an idea of where these fish have been staying. And as we go, I'm just gonna kind of map out this whole lake. Um, and it's really helping us catch more fish out here. So when you come up here, make sure you bend your barbs. Uh, and all your lures, lures, before you put them in the water, they have to be barbless. So you just bend them over, take your pliers, bend them. It is a, it's a good rule. It, doesn't, it uh, basically helps from harming the fish. You know, and like I said, you're gonna, you might miss a few, but you're gonna catch just as many. Day two, we decided to hunt stock trout on Barbie Lake, five miles north of Rocky Lake Resort. It was simply an amazing bite to say the least. We caught numerous rainbow trout and brook trout. Gosh, the trout just fight so hard. Northern Manitoba is just an absolute amazing place to visit. Already got him in the hole. Another brookie. Boy, it really just schools of brookies cruising through. First bait I want to talk about is what I always start with no matter where I'm fishing for them, and that's the Rapala Ultralight Rip and Wrap. I start out first thing in the morning ripping this, and I'll, you know, I'll rip it anywhere from two feet to three feet off the bottom to mid column to just underneath the ice, and this calls in and attracts big fish. So just some of the baits we're using today, and there's, there's many of them, but there's just a couple that I've been using. Just a little tungsten uh, jig with a with a little plastic, they've been coming in on that. I actually missed a couple on that one. I switched to this, this leech flutter spoon. You know, it's just time and time again, it's just amazing to me how that little bit of hair, whether it be on a crankbait or a spoon or whatever, is, is just like magic. You don't even need a bait, need bait, live bait or any kind of bait on that with that, with that hair. It just gives it that perfect little dancing. We obviously use hair on crankbaits for muskies and pike and bass and whatever else, but uh, even through the ice, that little bit of hair on a spoon or a jig is, is really deadly. And what I'm fishing with is a St. Croix Scandic. This actually is a medium light Scandic, really nice rod, but you'll notice the action where it actually folds almost two thirds of the way back down into the, the blank itself. The thing is, is a lot of times when we're trout fishing like this, we're not fishing with a lot of line out. We're only fishing out, like right now, I'm only fishing six foot below the hole. And we have potential to actually catch some pretty nice size uh, trout. So you need that soft action so when they hit it, the fish can take off without breaking them off. So I come to Northern Manitoba right here. The options are limitless and the fish are big. Such a beautiful fish. Manitoba, what can I say? It's just awesome up here.
The last day of our three-day Manitoba ice mission, we targeted lake trout on Clearwater Lake. There we go, got him. Oh, here he comes. There he is. There we go. <laughs> they are all muscle. Beautiful fish, Clearwater Lake Lakers. The nice thing about spring ice fishing is the weather. One piece of equipment that is necessary is an ice auger extension. This is a serious activity. I'm very extension, the ice is relatively thick. But the key is one thing that's really critical when you're cutting with an extension, we actually have a 10 inch bid on here too is to keep on clearing the hole because you don't want to get so, you get so much slush in there when it'll sort of lock it up. So what I got to do is, you know, intermittently keep on really sort of clearing the hole out. Yeah. It'd be nice to be using an eight inch blade. The problem is their fish are so big here, you, you got to almost have a 10 inch locker. Nice fish and just destroyed that plastic. And up here in Manitoba, you can uh, chum. We've been putting down um, some cut bait in a couple of these holes and it's really bringing the fish in. Keeping around here, because where we've been fishing, it's kind of just a flat. There's not a whole lot of structure. And with that chum, we're, we're kind of creating our own structure, right? We're keeping the fish here, keeping them in this area, keeping them interested and it's working. So we're going to keep doing it. One thing that you want to focus on and sometimes is actually is the weight of the bait and the drop speed of the bait, right? Like right here, I actually have a, a half ounce moon eye. Uh, but sometimes if the fish are inactive, a lot of times what I'd go down to is uh, light is like a quarter and you have a slower drop speed and it's dropping down when the fish are down on the bottom or, or more inactive. It seems like as they have bait feathers down on top of them, you'll have more to get an inactive fish. But you got to experiment, you know, and, and it, the weird thing is at certain days, a real small profile bait could be really hot. At other days, you know, a five inch bait can be really hot. It, it just depends. You know, you do a lot of experimentation throughout the course of the day to let the fish tell you what they want to bite. One of the real mainstream baits is, is a tube. This is a five inch white uh, big bite tube. It's got a pretty heavy uh, head in there anywhere from, you know, anywhere from a half to three quarter to a one ounce. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have a smaller minnow profile, that's a big bite slim minnow, a little bit larger, five inch jerk jerk minnow, and then I got a, a four inch uh, swim bait. Over here, this is a really good bait too, uh, three ounce or an ounce and a half to three ounce crippled herring, lure Jensen crippled, crippled herring. And then last but not least, a jigging wrap. Here he comes. <laughs> that one came flying off the bottom. That's exactly why you want a really good reel and why you want a really long rod too. This is about a 40 inch. Oh, this one's got some weight. This is a 40, 40 inch tuned up. And it's an LTP rod. And it's specific for lake trout. It's a lake, lake trout precision rod. Oh, he's right there. Right. Just, oh, a, just a nice one. Just a nice one, but like I said, they, they are tough. I mean, you saw that thing take the drag. Pretty, uh, they are all muscle. This is a smaller sized animal here. They come much, much bigger. Can you imagine having a 30, 40 pounder on? You saw that thing take rip drag. Those giants really know how to rip drag. Let me go back in. All of us agreed this was one of the best ice fishing trips we've ever been on. Yes, it is a drive, but if you want incredible fishing, it's worth it. We'd like to thank Dale and Teresa Forrester at Rocky Lake Resort for taking care of us during our stay. Give them a ring if you're interested in some of the incredible fishing opportunities Manitoba offers. There we go. <laughs> In the beak, barbless comes, pops right out. Awesome.
Beauty up. Manitoba, Rocky Lake. Manitoba's northern region is truly a special place, and if you've got the time this winter, you got to plan a trip, you won't regret it. Now we're going to switch gears and take a look at one of the lightest and most compact augers out on the ice. Hey everybody, Adam Rasmussen here. I want to talk about one of my favorite new products on the ice this year, and that's the Strike Master 24V. So with the 24 volt system, this thing is still plenty fast and has plenty of power to get through thick ice as well. You know, if you're a guy that's just gonna go out and maybe drill 10 or 15 holes, you're fine with one battery for a day. I can actually usually get about 50 holes through a foot and a half of ice with one charge. So not only does it come in an eight inch, it comes in a six inch as well for all of you panfish guys out there. Uh, so just the overall, it's a really lightweight, versatile auger, and this makes my job a lot easier when I gotta drill holes all day for my customers carry a couple extra batteries and uh, I can go anywhere with this and I don't get fatigued after you know drilling 100 200 volts in a day. Last winter I joined Caleb Wistad on an epic shallow water panfish bite and we got to see the effectiveness of an Aquaview underwater camera. Hey I'm out here today with Caleb Wistad my good buddy we're in northern Wisconsin and we're gonna be doing a little uh, shallow water pan fishing. We're gonna be targeting bluegills, perch and crappies and might find a few largemouth and pike mixed in, but it should be a good day. What we're fishing here is a big, expansive, shallow lake. And in the wintertime, we tend to have low oxygen levels throughout the lake. And there's a, there's a few areas that these fish will key on when the oxygen drops. And uh, one of them is where we're fishing here. It's actually a stream coming into the end of the lake. Uh, other places you can look for um, this type of a pattern are springs. You know, anywhere there's springs where the water stays open or even an aerator if it's an aerated lake. So we're using downsized, you know, smaller rattle baits, small spoons and uh, tungsten jigs with plastics to catch even the larger species here. If you don't have a camera or some way to actually see them bite, you won't even know that they're biting. God, nice. <laughs> that's how light they're biting right now. I had, there's no way you would have hooked that fish by feel. Not gonna happen. So like Caleb's been saying, the bite is super light, but it's been really important to use the right setup. So I'll kind of run through what we've been using. I've got a 32 inch tune up customs rod, precision noodle. It's a super lightweight rod with a really sensitive tip, so that's been key for detecting those light bites. And I've got it spooled up with two pound tests. So, you know, we got super light line. We've just got a half in on here, so we're using small tungsten jigs. And we're just feathering it down, working it real light and slow. And these fish are just kind of sucking it in. And that's how we've been catching most of them. You that's a tank. The hump on his head, just tall. Yep, there's one. So these, uh, these panfish are so stacked in here. We really want to be careful about over harvesting these fish. They're super vulnerable and they're no problem releasing these fish. They're only in a couple feet of water. They just swim right away. So take enough for a meal, but uh, make sure you, you just let as many as, go as you can. And we have to remember all these fish are coming here from the whole lake. It's not like the whole lake looks like this. So just keep that in mind if you find these fish concentrated like this. There we, nice. there we go. There we go. Another nice hybrid. Oh, so cool. So fun watching them on the camera. Should have already sent them another there idea. You got, got them? Yep. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice. <laughs> she fills up the whole hand. Ate the slab wrap. There we go. Nice. nice. Decent little crappie there. Not a monster, but still a nice fish. It's so cool to have all these different species using the same spot like this. You know, if you haven't given the shallow water panfish bite a try, you gotta get out here and do it. But one tool you gotta bring, it's been huge for our success today, is an underwater camera. You're able to see the fish, you're able to see what's happening, one fish are biting, 
It's been an awesome day on the ice. It has, yeah. If you get a chance, try this shallow water bite. It's a blast. Go get hooked up. It's been an awesome day out here. That wraps up this episode of Angling Buzz Ice. Make sure to head to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter and giveaways. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. First Ice is just around the corner. Hey, look at that. First crappie, huh? Now we're having fun, huh? Yeah, and you know what? Fun is the key ingredient to a good time. You better believe it. All right, let's go That's have right. some fun. Woo. Oh, careful. And you get real thick ice and lots of snow and it just compounds the oxygen level problem throughout the lake. And then uh, I'm gonna start that over yep. so we don't have Jake. So I just dumped a fish right <laughs> Dump a fish. real tough. <laughs> A little bit of everything. Perch that popped off.